authorities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have announced the arrival of Muslim pilgrims to the holy city of Mecca for the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Official media reports said the Ministry of Islamic Affairs has completed preparations to welcome the pilgrims in accordance with health protocols to stem the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Last month, authorities in the kingdom announced that less than 10,000 Muslim worshippers will be allowed to perform the Hajj pilgrimage this year due to the pandemic. Under health protocols announced by Riyadh, wearing face masks will be mandatory for pilgrims during the ritual and entry to holy sites will not be allowed without a permit. Nations in Asia imposed new restrictions on Tuesday while an abrupt British quarantine on travelers from Spain through Europe's summer reopening into disarray with the world confronted the prospect of a second wave of COVID-19 infections. In the United States, still dealing with its first wave as infection rates have climbed since June, President Donald Trump's national security adviser, Robert O'Brien, became the most senior official to test positive. The White House said President Trump had not interacted with him in days and was not at risk. Surges were reported in several countries that previously appeared to have the virus under control. A new COVID-19 cluster in a port city in northeast China has spread to other provinces and prompted fresh restrictions, authorities said on Tuesday, as Beijing scrambles to prevent a second wave of infections. China had largely brought the virus under control since it first emerged in the country late last year through a series of strict lockdowns and travel restrictions. But in recent months, a number of small outbreaks have given cause for concern, with China reporting 68 new infections on Tuesday, the highest daily number since April. Of those, 57 were in the northwest region of Chengyang, where an outbreak has seen millions of presidents tested and strict lockdowns in the regional capital Orgi. The government said Vietnam on Tuesday locked down its third largest city for two weeks after 15 cases of COVID-19 were found in a hospital. Public transport into and out of the central city of Da Nang was cancelled. Over the weekend, thousands of mostly Vietnamese tourists had to end their summer holidays in the popular beach destination. The lockdown has dealt a hard blow to the city's tourism industry, which was just being revived after earlier coronavirus cases mostly subsided at the end of April. Johns Hopkins University reported in its real-time tally, the United States on Tuesday recorded 57,000 39 new COVID-19 cases in 24 hours. According to the Baltimore-based University, the U.S. is the hardest-hit country in terms of both death toll and total caseload, which stood at 4,286,663. An additional 679 deaths brought the overall death toll to 147,588. After dropping infection rate in the late spring, the U.S. has seen a recent surge in COVID-19 cases, mainly in southern and western states such as California, Texas, Alabama, and Florida. The biggest test yet of an experimental COVID-19 vaccine got underway on Tuesday, with the first of some 30,000 Americans rolling up their sleeves to receive shots created by the U.S. government as part of the all-out global race to stop the pandemic. The glimmer of the hope came even as Google decreed that most of its 200,000 employees and contractors should work from home through next June, a decision that could influence other big companies. Final stage testing of the vaccine developed by the National Institutes of Health and Moderna Incorporation began with volunteers at numerous sites around the U.S. given either a real dose or a placebo without being told which. The British government promised Tuesday to build thousands of miles of new bike lanes to get people moving and healthy after months of coronavirus lockdown. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's pledge comes on the heels of a plan to force restaurants to display calories on menus as part of a broader effort to win the battle of the budge. Government data showed that two-thirds of the UK adults are above heavy weight. Some studies suggest that the virus is especially deadly to people who are obese. 
North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said that Pyongyang's nuclear weapons guarantee its safety, state media reported Tuesday, signaling once again that it will not give up its arsenal. The official Korean Central News Agency said leader Kim was addressing a conference of veterans on the 67th anniversary of the 1953 armistice that ended Korean war hostilities. Up to 3 million Koreans died in the three-year conflict in which the armistice has never been replaced with a peace treaty, leaving North and South technically still at war. President Donald Trump named an outspoken critic of U.S. military deployments as ambassador to Germany Tuesday as he moves to build troops from the NATO ally. The White House said that the U.S. leader had nominated retired Colonel Douglas McGregor, a frequent commentator on Fox News, who has written about German military history. The nomination needs to be confirmed by the Senate, where President Trump's Republican Party enjoys a majority, but which has limited time to act before November the third elections, as lawmakers focus on the coronavirus pandemic. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has been found guilty on all seven corruption charges in his first trial linked to a multi-billion dollar scandal at state fund One Malaysia Development Berhad. Each of the charges carry hefty fines and jail terms of up to 15 or 20 years. The landmark case has been widely seen as a test for the country's efforts to stamp out corruption and could have big political implications for the Southeast Asian nation. Kuala Lumpur High Court Judge Mohammed Nazdan Mohammed Ghazali said on Tuesday, after considering all evidence in this trial, he found that the prosecution has successfully proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt. Australian police on Tuesday arrested six people and ordered about 50 others to disperse after they gathered in Sydney for a Black Lives Matter protest despite an official ban because of the coronavirus pandemic. Nearly 200 people gathered in Sydney on Tuesday for a banned Black Lives Matter protest, but the large police operation just minutes before it began ensured barely anyone took part. Police had said the gathering was unauthorized and in breach of coronavirus prevention measures, a position backed by a court ruling on Monday as Australia tackles a spike in COVID-19 cases. Security officials and an aid group said that flash floods have ravaged swathes of war-torn Yemen, leaving dozens dead and destroying thousands of homes. At a time when Yemen is already mired in escalated fighting, widespread hunger and a major COVID-19 outbreak, the spate of torrential rains is exacerbating the world's worst humanitarian disaster. Abdi Ismail, the head of the International Committee of the Red Cross Mission in Yemen, said the combination of coronavirus, conflict and heavy rains this year is hurting millions of Yemenis across the country. In southern Yemen, 33,000 displaced people who were sheltering in camps lost their tents and belongings in the floods, the International Committee reported, adding that dozens have died across the country. Gold raised to record peaks on Tuesday before the sheer scale of its gains drew a burst of profit-taking, which in turn helped the dollar from two-year lows and curbed early equity gains. The precious metal had stormed almost 40 US dollar higher at one point to reach 1,980 US dollar an onus, only for a wave of selling to slap it back to the 1,940 in wild trade. Gold is still up over $125 in little more than a week as investors wager the Federal Reserve will reaffirm its super easy policies at its meeting this week and perhaps signal a tolerance for higher inflation in the long run.